Welcome, my friends, to the ultimate storage showdown. We're going to be looking at places you can store your data and ways you can do it, including <clears throat> regular USB 3 external desktop hard drives, <clears throat> cached external USB 3 desktop hard drives, NAS, including a two-bay unit here from Buffalo, as well as the new kit on the block, which is external SSDs also running off of USB 3. So this particular one right here is the SSD to go from Angelbird. Let's start with the original. USB external storage. Advantages, inexpensive. Disadvantages, no backup per se, nothing special in terms of performance. It performs as well as the drive inside uh, or the interface, whichever of the two is slower. Now this, my friends, is an external USB 3 enclosure with a twist. This one has active cooling, which can be better for the drive inside. It also has <clears throat> a one gigabyte RAM cache. So what that means is when reading or writing to the device, you can actually benefit from the storage being cached as opposed to relying on the magnetic storage inside, which is obviously slower than memory. So USB 3 is capable of a theoretical 5 gigabit per second, which is around 500 megabytes per second. So we're going to see with this unique solution, the HDGDU3 from Buffalo, how close we can get to that limit. Now this is where things start to get into trade-offs. This right here is a two-bay Buffalo NAS, or network attached storage. Personally, I'm a huge advocate of network attached storage for a couple of reasons. Number one is this is a two-bay. That means you can run it in RAID 1, meaning that your data will be resistant to a hardware failure of a drive. You'll actually be able to have all of your data back even if one of the drives dies outright. Also, network attached storage is handy because you can share it not only with multiple users on the same network, so you can consolidate all your data in one place, which is more efficient, but also you can share it with yourself. You can create a personal cloud, so to speak, so you can get access to your data from anywhere. This is something that can only be achieved with a regular hard drive by physically carrying it around with you. Now, with that said, NASs do add an incremental cost. So in addition to the drives themselves, you have to get an enclosure, which is more expensive than a regular USB enclosure closure and the performance is limited not only by the gigabit ethernet interface which most of them have meaning around 100 megabytes per second maximum but also typically by the chipsets inside them only very high performance NASs can achieve gigabit speeds SSD storage. Limited number of write cycles, but in the context of an external drive, I really don't think it's that important. When's the last time you burned through the entire lifespan of a USB thumb drive before you actually lost it or physically damaged it or whatever else the case may be? They don't really die that often. And these are using much higher quality NAND than you'll find in a typical thumb drive. Okay, so there's that disadvantage, but the advantage is they are significantly faster than pretty much anything else, and they are shock resistant. Unlike hard drives, which are mechanical devices, which rely on like, like smaller than the width of a hair tolerances in order to operate, SSDs are extremely robust. And if you want to chuck something in a bag and carry it around with you, that is a great solution. With that said, capacities are lower than what's available on hard drives, and they are way, way more expensive per gigabyte. So it all comes down to... Well, how well does it perform and do you need the ruggedness? Now, the first thing you'll see behind me is a graph. No, it's not a graph yet. It's our title screen created by Wheels, who is going to be helping us with NCIX Tech Tips over the next little while. He also ran all the benchmarks using Blackmagic's disk speed test and three terabyte Seagate Barracuda 7200 RPM drives. We use those drives so that we wouldn't be held back in any way by the drives themselves. And we use Blackmagic disk speed test because it's extremely handy, very convenient, and it's free. All you have to do is download the latest Intensity Pro driver you don't even have to have a card, and it'll install the disk speed test on your PC, not just Mac. So first up, we've got write performance. Yeah, the NAS, not that fast. We expected this. It's not held back by the drives and not held back by the interface, but held back by the chipset. In fact, for an inexpensive NAS, around 70 megabytes per second, regardless of file size, is actually not that bad. Next up, we've got the SSD solution. So in terms of writes, around 300 megabytes per second is pretty darn fast. 
it's, well, the fastest that we have here. Next up, we have a regular drive using USB 3.0 with no cache. Now we're seeing a bottleneck caused by the drive itself. In fact, 190 megabytes per second for an internal regular old hard drive, actually not that terrible. If we were using much smaller files though, it would lag behind the SSD much more significantly than this. So if you're moving around things like video files, this is a great solution. Speaking of using it for things like video files, last but not least, we have our cached drive. On the very first run, we get phenomenal write performance, which means it's definitely not writing to the hard drive in there because it's writing too fast for that. So it's probably writing to the RAM and then moving that over to the hard drive afterwards. After a little while, we see that the algorithm kicks in and performance calms down quite a bit in terms of writes. Next up, we've got reads, where it's a bit of a different story. For whatever reason, the NAS is actually slower on reads than it is on writes in our particular benchmark. The SSD is about the same, and our no-cache drive is identical to the write performance. And the reason for this is because a regular mechanical hard drive will read and write pretty much the same regardless. We're just waiting for the heads to move around. Finally, we have our cached solution. On the first run, reads were also very fast, but again, they calm down a little bit when we move to successive runs as well, but still faster than a regular drive, that should be noted, as well as when we are using massive files that are too big for the cache itself to benefit from. So this is where we see how we would benefit from a cached drive, mostly in terms of reads and when you're reading data repetitively as opposed to pulling down one massive file where you're gonna be bottlenecked instead by the hard drive inside. Thank you for checking out this special versus edition of NCIX Tech Tips. Don't forget to subscribe to NCIX.com for more videos like this from your favorite e-tailer.